All right. So you should congratulate yourself for making it here. Getting off the ground isn't the easiest of things. Take pride, enjoy in this accomplishment, and go wild with it. Fly like a crazy fool. Pull loops, barrel rolls, email months, exceed the forbidden speech while diving, flirt with the stall speech while climbing. This is how you learn. This is how you get intimate with your aircraft and its capabilities. That said, the forbidden speeds or maneuvers in manuals are there for a reason. However, you need to make mistakes and fuck up big time to learn. And when you have your fill with all these, simmer down and try to go from point A to point B in a safe and efficient manner. It's usually at this stage new pilots hit a wall of frustration. You'll find that without an autopilot system, you're climbing and diving spontaneously, and as such, struggle to keep to your designated altitude or speed. So how do we stop this flight from turning into a roller coaster? The obvious answer is to use our stick to correct our pitch and force a neutral attitude. However, that's not the only method. If we go back to the basics, thrust equals speed, speed equals lift. Therefore, what you're doing with your throttle and as such your speed has an impact on your pitch angle. Going faster will increase your lift and force the plane to pitch up, and slowing down will reduce the lift, forcing the plane to pitch down. As such, if you're struggling to find a good stick position to keep the VSI neutral, playing around with the power a bit may help you squeeze that extra bit of unwanted pitch out and establish level flight easier. Although this is never going to be perfect because wind and turbulence and small pilot errors all move you around a bit, if you've reached that equilibrium all you need is very minor finger pressure adjustments. Once you figure that one out, straight flight is easy enough. Let's move on to turns. One of the most frustrating aspects of flying is perhaps turning without losing altitude. Let's look at why we lose altitude while turning first and then let's find the solution to this problem. So, in level and straight flight, lift equally opposes weight. Therefore, you maintain your altitude. When we introduce some bank angle, our aircraft's lift vector offsets to the direction of the bank. Therefore, a portion of our lift force that is needed to maintain our altitude is no longer there. And thus, we start sinking. The bigger the bank angle, the less vertical lift force we have and the more altitude we lose. With 90 degrees of bank angle pushing our lift vector perpendicular to our weight and leaving us with zero vertical lift force. As you can imagine, if you're carrying passengers and comfort is a consideration, or if you're casually flying and not in a hurry, there is no reason for you to pull more than 30 degrees angle of bank. More excessive bank angle is reserved for aerobatic and combat scenarios. As to how we compensate for this loss of lift, we need to pull the controls back and pitch up the appropriate amount. Pitching up increases the angle of attack of the wings, in turn increasing our lift. Before we initiate the turn, we need to make sure we're flying straight. We initiate the turn, attitude indicator shows 30 degrees of bank, the VSI indicates altitude loss. Pull back and compensate for it. That's it. Try to keep it there. It's a lot harder than it sounds. Here, the bank angle increases without me noticing. This further reduces my vertical lift force and makes me lose altitude. As you can clearly see, you must monitor both the VSI and the attitude indicator to keep a constant bank angle. Here we observe the opposite problem. Bank angle reduces, vertical lift force increases and I start climbing. Just returning to 30 degrees of bank is enough to neutralize the climb. and we level out. 
keep a close eye on the VSI so that you can monitor the effects your inputs have. That way you can know exactly what it is you need to do. Lastly, we've already mentioned the turn coordinator in a previous video, so it's time to talk about the coordinated turns. Keep in mind this is only relevant to you if you fly old school fighters or general aviation, as the more modern aircraft have ways of mitigating slip automatically. So, I've swapped to the P-51 Mustang and when I turn, you will see that the ball moves away from the center of my slip indicator. This means that my turn is uncoordinated. The effects of uncoordinated turning are an increase in drag which impacts speed and fuel consumption as well as increases the risk of stalls. Most aircraft while rolling towards one direction tend to experience yaw towards the opposite direction. This effect is called adverse yaw and I will cover it more extensively in a different video. The cure to this illness is the meticulous and precise application of the rudder. As real pilots say, step on the ball. That is to say, keep it centered. Keep in mind that it's not an on and off thing. You slowly roll on the rudder as you enter the turn and then you gently roll off of it in accordance with the gradual reduction of your roll. Using dedicated rudder pedals versus the joystick twist grip is a night and day difference and thus if you're serious about old school aviation or choppers I urge you to buy rudder pedals sooner rather than later. The last thing I want to cover in this video is trim. Trim is once again something that is a lot more relevant to us that fly old school stuff as most of the times modern aircraft again take care of this for you. So as previously discussed, even if you have a very good understanding of power setting and how speed and thrust interact with lift, you will still experience some hiccups in your flight. Altitude changes, speed changes, winds hitting your aircraft from various directions and with varied intensity, all these will introduce tendencies you need to remove. You can do that by hand, but in two or three hour flights, you'll be physically exhausted. This is where trim steps in. The trim surfaces are small control surfaces that can move independently from the main control surface. And contrary to the main control surface that always wants to return to a neutral position, the trim surface can lock in place, thus allowing you to make corrections just with the trim controls instead of moving your stick. The Mustang in particular is absolutely ingenious in this. On takeoff for example, I can put my rudder on takeoff trim to compensate for the brutal P factor pulling me to the left. I can trim my ailerons to account for asymmetric loads and I can trim my elevator take as much away from the push or pull motions as I can. This in turn allows me to focus on other rather important tasks such as the monitoring of the engine parameters as well as my heading. It really is a game changer. That said, we finally reached the end of this tutorial video. It probably was the longest I've done thus far and I didn't want to split trim and coordinated turns to other videos. I'll see you on the next one where we are going to land our aircraft and hopefully live to tell the tale. Tengu signing out, good flying.